Sport has the power to build strength and confidence. Heal, inspire, and bring communities together. This is Level Playing Field. Hello and welcome to Level Playing Field. I'm your host, Greg Westlake. I hope you're as stoked as we are because this week we hit the water with members of the Canadian National Adaptive Surfing Team. Up first, we learn how one surfer's decision to join the team led to some major changes in her life. Ling Pai is one of the top ranked visually impaired surfers in the world. And we caught up with her and husband, Chris Oberly on the beaches and waves of Tofino, British Columbia. I got into surfing really because I just love the feeling of it. It, it feels like you're, you're floating or you're, you're flying. I used to snowboard. And the difference between snowboarding and surfing is that when you're snowboarding, you're the one moving and the element is not. But when you're surfing, the element is moving, but you're not moving. And that's a really cool feeling. And it, you feel very light and you're just sort of going. Since joining the competitive circuit with Canada's adaptive surf team, that's exactly what Ling Pai has been doing, going where the waves take her. It's led her life in some interesting directions, from a big move south to a new marriage. And none of it would have happened had she not learned how to accept help. Which is something that took some time to do after she was first diagnosed with dominant optical atrophy at just 14 years old. It was pretty tough. It was dark for sure, but there was nothing they could do about it. They didn't say, hey, these are the treatments for you. They just said, well, we're just going to watch you. So come back every year and uh, we'll, just, we'll just track it and see how it goes. The waiting and watching was something the family was familiar with because Ling's mother, Diane, had been diagnosed with the condition a few years prior. As Ling's sister, Shine, points out, that's about all they knew for sure. It's rare. So you don't, you, like, I've never heard of it. If you research on it, not like, even the doctors don't know much about it. You don't know uh, what's going to happen. And if something will eventually happen, like there's, there's so much unknown. Despite all the uncertainty, Ling's annual checkup ensured she got a regular reminder where things were headed. And I remember really not wanting to go to those appointments and I would sort of cry the week before and the week after and then try to forget about it for the rest of the year. Because I would go to these appointments and I would read the Snellen chart, the, the chart that has all the letters. And basically every year I would be able to see fewer and fewer letters and I would move up the row, basically finding out that my vision is getting worse. When my vision started to get blurry, I sort of found ways to hide it. And I did that because I didn't want people to know that I couldn't see. Those who know her best, like longtime friend Devin Nunes, believe her desire to hide her sight loss was rooted in her independent spirit. I don't think she was trying to fool me, though. I feel like she was trying not to burden me. You know, for out, I don't think she wanted me to feel like I had to always be looking out for her. Because she's super independent and strong, and I don't think people who are like that want to feel like they need help with everyday things. When my eyes got so bad that I became legally blind, I was able to tap into essentially a whole field of helpers. Those helpers included the folks at Whistler Adaptive Sport in British Columbia, who Ling reached out to for ski lessons. And that was probably one of my best experiences as a legally blind person. They were so helpful and kind, and they taught me how to ski in a season. And now I can ski. Not only did she learn to ski, she also learned the value of getting help when needed. Ling even started accepting assistance from friends so she could continue to enjoy all the sports she had always loved, like trail running with Devin in Stanley Park. I think at one point, she just kept falling and it became necessary that, okay, if we're gonna do this, you need a little bit of guidance. Big roots, big drop. So it just evolved 
and as she wanted to do some races and things like that, then it became more formal, you know, what do you need? Um, what can I give to you so this is a pleasant experience for you and not stressful? While Ling was learning the power of help, she was also trying to convince her mother, Diane, that her newfound passion for surfing was safe for someone who was legally blind. Initially, it caused a great deal of friction between the two. It's uh, not accept acceptable for me, you know, because it's uh, not a group sport. How can you do that by yourself? You know, I feel it's too dangerous. So we had a big fight, you know. It's uh, very terrible, you know. We never had a, such big fight. Over time, her mother softened her stance somewhat, and Ling continued to surf when she could. Then, in 2018, she was connected with the manager of the Canadian Adaptive Surf Team, Jerry Burns. Uh, she's just had this natural look and ability right from the beginning, reading the waves well, and, uh, and had a good understanding of the fundamentals of it all. I had never competed in surfing before in my life. Before that, surfing was just vacations. So I would work really hard all year, and then I would plan these surfing excursions to you know, Costa Rica, Mexico, different parts of the world, maybe twice a year, and that was it. So when Jerry said, yeah, Worlds is in December 2018, um, you're in, I panicked and thought, what am I gonna do? What she did was go to California for a month to train for and compete in the US Open event as a tune-up for the Worlds. In that first contest, the waves were huge. They were so big. They were the biggest waves that I had ever served. Some, some real gnarly pounders, and, and she had took some, she took some big wipeouts. I didn't know what I was doing. I had the wrong equipment. I had the wrong board. It was a learning experience. She kept at it and, uh, and, then, and then rocked it at the Worlds right after. Ling was clearly on a high, headed into her first international competition. Her mother, on the other hand, was still not fully on board. In an effort to change that, when she returned to California for the ISA World Parasurfing Championship, she brought her mom and sister along for the ride. I think mom had a 180 degree change in her opinion. When I saw her out of the ocean, oh, the big smile on her face, genuine smile. I realized that. I, I can feel that the, the waves wash off her sadness, you know. I feel, oh, she's really happy. I told Shine, she's really happy, and Shine is so happy, so excited. Shine says Ling is so happy. The big smile, you know. Not only did she win over her mom at the Worlds, she also took home some hardware in what was only her second competition. English, she's so great, and she's so beautiful and graceful and confident on the board. It was to us, all of us, it was a big deal because it was my, I was representing Canada and I got silver. You're watching Level Playing Field with Greg Westlake. Welcome back to Level Playing Field with Greg Westlake. Sport Explained, Parasurfing. Parasurfing is an open water sport where athletes are judged on their technique and style riding waves on a surfboard. Board size varies depending on the preference of the surfer and athletes are allowed prosthetics, orthotics or any safety equipment required. All athletes follow International Surfing Association, ISA, rules for the size of their board. The sport has four categories for athletes with physical impairments from stand, kneel, sit and prone, broken into seven classifications divisions. For athletes with a visual impairment, there are two classifications. All classes must compete independently during their heat or wave. However, Surfers in the Prone 2 class are pushed into their swell, and visually impaired surfers are allowed verbal cues from a marked guide to catch a wave. In competition, athletes are judged on a scale of 0 to 10, with the degree of difficulty of the wave, white water, and the complexity of the technique and style of maneuvers during the ride considered. 
the score from the surface two best waves over their timed heat is used to determine their point total. Now you're ready to hang 10. After winning silver at the ISA Adaptive Surfing Worlds in 2018, Ling Pai felt her life had come full circle. She had evolved from a frightened 14-year-old who was told she would eventually go blind to a woman who learned to accept help and found a new passion on the water. Actually, make that two new passions. The beaches and waters of Tofino, British Columbia hold a special place in the hearts of Ling Pai and her husband and fellow adaptive surfer, Chris Oberly. We got engaged right on Cox Bay where we surf today. We were just hanging out and then all of a sudden there was just nobody out there. It was just her and me hanging out there and I thought this, is, this has got to be the perfect moment to do this. So I proposed there and uh, she said yes. Getting engaged in Canada's number one surfing destination is fitting for a couple that's relationship is so clearly tied to the sport. In fact, the groundwork for their relationship developed at the same time she was laying the foundation for her competitive surf career. On that fateful training trip to California in preparation for the 2018 Worlds, Ling and Chris had a serendipitous introduction on Ling's first night in town. I asked her if, you know, if, who, how she was gonna go surfing and she said she was just gonna walk down to the break and I told her, well, I surf every morning so I can just pick you up and if you wanna surf with me. And so we just started doing every morning. I would pick her up really early in the morning. So it was just a lot of like really long traffic sessions where we got to talk a lot and she's just, just really easy to talk to and we surfed all the time. Over the next year, their relationship evolved both on and off the water. Chris, who competes in the sit ski classification and uses a manual wheelchair on dry land, eventually relocated to Vancouver to be closer to Ling. He also started acting as her training partner and coach on the surf. Is it better down we there, were like we said? That it might be better on that end because of the swell direction, but. But do you tell. think we're like more protected on this end? I don't know. There was definitely a learning curve, and a, there was a bit of a process to go through. Uh, trusting each other in the water, or her trusting me more in the water, and me trusting her ability. I think sometimes there's some friction. I don't always listen to him, he knows that. Or he like puts me in a bad position and I'll, and I'll come back and I'll be mad. Why did you call me into that wave? It was, I was way too far in and that, that totally tossed me. And then he would feel really bad. But in the end, it's always really fun and we have a great time together. The couple was having so much fun in the water that they decided to move to Southern California in spring of last year so Link could focus on getting even better on her board and keep up with the ever-improving competition. And staying true to their surf roots, the pair married at the ocean's edge that June. It's at the beach, not easy to push the wheelchair, right? But I saw how they help each other. I don't know how to help Chris, but Link knew and uh, Chris know how to help Ling too. I feel like Chris loves me for who I am and I feel the same way for him and we can just be ourselves when we're with each other. A new wedding ring wasn't the only keepsake she added to her collection on the trip. The move also paid off with a bronze medal at the 2021 ISA Worlds. But Ling's quick to point out she doesn't do it for the accolades. For me, competing really is about participation. When it's a sport that we're trying to grow, if I don't participate, that means the number goes down. And if the number goes down, it, it becomes even harder for us to move forward with it. And I do think that moving it forward means a lot more exposure. Um, and that means getting more surfers in the water that have visual impairments. She wants other girls or other guys that you know, are visually impaired or completely blind or whatever the level of their sight impairment is to be able to get in the water and surf. When I first started surfing, I never envisioned that I would be in the situation that I'm in now where I'm surfing competitively and representing Canada. So reaching the podium isn't Ling's top priority. 
Nonetheless, when she does, she finds herself reflecting on her journey with sight loss and surfing. It brought me to worlds. It made, it made it so that my mom would be supportive of me surfing. It made it so that I met Chris and all these other great people. So you just can't, you really don't know what's gonna happen in life. You just have to keep pushing and keep going. You can't just give up and say, oh well, like if I'm gonna go blind, I guess I might as well just sit at home and do nothing. That doesn't work. Ling's dedication to growing the sport is admirable, and it's something she shares with other members of the Canadian National Adaptive Surfing Team. Next, we meet a couple of Ling's teammates. Stay tuned for more Level Playing Field. You're watching Level Playing Field with Greg Westlake. When the inaugural ISA World Adaptive Surfing Championship kicked off in 2015, Canada was nowhere to be found. One year later, four athletes represented the red and white on the water. Victoria Feige was part of that group. We're here in the 2016 Stans ISA World Adaptive Surfing Championships. I was shocked at the level of skill of, at the ISAs. People from Brazil and Australia were, were getting barreled and like kicking up spray and like doing snaps and cutbacks and high performance surfing. It was awesome <laughs> and I, it changed my perspective about what was possible because I saw people and they were predominantly men but they were just ripping and it didn't matter that they had a disability on land they absolutely crushed in the ocean. That was Victoria Feige's first exposure to competitive adaptive surfing but it wouldn't be her last. Since that time Victoria has dedicated herself to the sport and become the top ranked female Neil Division surfer in the world. Though. She's quick to point out that she couldn't have done it without some guidance along the way. Because adaptive sports rely on adaptive equipment, having a board that fits your level of, uh, of disability and also facilitates what strength you have instead of hinder hinders it can be absolutely game changing. It becomes possible because of this community. But I, I didn't know any of this stuff until I really started talking with um, the men and women of, of the Adapt Surf community. One member of Team Canada who has a lot of knowledge to share is Vancouver native Scott Patterson. As part of the first ever national team in 2016, Scott is not just a veteran of surfing. He is a three-time Paralympian in three different sports, athletics, alpine skiing, and swimming. Now his sport of choice is surfing, and as a double leg amputee, he does so in the prone division. While he's not as focused on winning as he was in his Paralympic days, he still loves to compete. It's also, you know, it's fun hanging around people that um, do, you know, the same sport, right? And it's, yeah, met a lot of good friends through surfing. And, and, you know, when you get in the water though, that's it, man. You say, okay, I'm going for that wave. Yeah, I still want to see if I can make that surfboard go nice. But uh, I think, um, you know, now I'm getting older, I have to just, uh, I think, um, not be so serious so much about it, right? Even if I, if I can, I don't know. We'll see. At 60 years old, Scott's laid back approach is understandable, but others have taken a different approach. Of the five members of Team Canada, three have moved south to focus on surfing. Ling Pai and Nathan Schmid to California, and Victoria to Hawaii. Now we're in a situation where we can get up in the morning early, go for a surf, and then come back and go to work. That's been really special. I have this chance. I think for whatever reason, I have the strength and skill and the absolute burning love of the ocean to really be good at this. And I want to give it a solid chance while I have the time and see really how far I can go. Victoria captured her third straight gold medal at the 2021 Worlds. She also took over as manager of the Canadian team last summer. Now, more than ever, dividing her time between improving her craft and helping grow her sport. I have big goals for adaptive surfing. I think that the level of athleticism and skill would be a really good fit for the Paralympics. My goal would be to have 
the Paralympics as a demo sport for 2024 and for medals for 2028. The prestige of competing for Canada at the Paralympics would also mean a little help for the athletes. There is no money for adaptive surfing. One day, if it's in the Paralympics, there might be federal funding, but there is nothing right now. So it's clear Victoria and the other surfers on the Canadian team don't do it for the money. Each has their own reasons for competing. What they do share is a love of the water and a passion for growing the sport that's given them so much. While I've got this moment and I'm, I'm strong, relatively young and healthy, I, I want to see how far I can go. I want to do airs. I want to do epic maneuvers. I want, when people see adaptive surfing, I don't want it to be like, oh, good for them. I want it to be like, holy crap, that just is awesome. And it is fun to push the boundaries and see what you're capable of. But the ability to have this in my life every day and go in the water and feel equal and free and alive, that is what surfing has done for me. With people like Ling and Victoria working so hard to grow the sport, I don't think it will be too long before we see para-surfing at the Summer Games. It's also worth mentioning that adaptive surfing isn't just for high performers. Anyone can grab a board, a lesson, and enjoy Canada's ocean playgrounds. That's all the time we have today. I'm Greg Westlake. Thanks for watching. Host, Greg Westlake. Producer, Ted Cooper. Associate producer, Alex Smythe. Director of photography, Matthew McGurk. Videographers, Sergio Vera Barahona. Isaiah Frosty Neiman. Senior editor, Matthew McGurk. Editor Manuel Grados Andrade. Media Accessibility Specialist Ron Rickford. Audio Post Mike Monson. Graphics Mike Smith, Andrew Antonello. Senior Producer Michelle Dudas. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media Inc.